morning, Trinity. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Chelsea Whittington, and I will be your announcer and hostess for this morning's worship service. Registration for the Star Base Camp is available now. Contact Benita Blanford Jones to ensure that your child is grouped with the other Trinity attendees to work out transportation needs. Trinity's Bible Study Series, Victorious in Spiritual Warfares, Ephesians 6, chapter 10 through the 12 verses, live streamed at 6 o'clock p.m. on Wednesday evenings and by phone at 1 978-990-5200. That's 1-978-990-5200. Access code 126042-POUND sign. Women's Bible Study tentatively postponed to Tuesday, May 19, 2020. Please continue to read the Ruth Anointing, chapters 1 through 4. Read and identify two ideas, thoughts, and perceptions from each chapter. Then identify the page number and paragraph. Be prepared to discuss for our next meeting, tentatively scheduled for May 19, 2020. The interdenominational Bible Bowl has been canceled for this year, but a family fun night will be offered at a later date to those who have been participants in this year's Bible Bowl. Dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic is taxing for most adults. We can't begin to imagine the effect this is having on our youth. The Joshua Troop is working to bring some fun activities to our youth to help them during this time. Parents, please follow our Facebook posts and also check your emails on a regular basis. Applications for absentee ballots are available at the church. The applications must be faxed to the County Election Board office at 219-755-3801. Faxing is available at the church office. I just want to remind you of the ways of giving that we have established here at the Trinity Missionary Baptist Church. You can mail your donations to Trinity Baptist Church, 1831 Virginia Street, Gary, Indiana, 46407. You can also place it in the church mailbox or come into the church during office hours. You can leave a message and we can arrange pickup. The Trinity Church Hub, which is an app which many of you are already using. And last but not least, once again, our newest opportunity, the Trinity Cash App. If you are using the Trinity Cash App, please send your donations using the code dollar sign Trinity Baptist 1831. Again, that's dollar sign Trinity Baptist 1831. And last but not least, congratulations to Trinity's own Jalen Holmes, Woo! who has signed to play with Western Michigan University. Congratulations, Jalen. We are Jalen, we are so proud of you. And now for our welcome. It is my pleasure to serve as your hostess today on this beautiful day that the Lord has made. And whether you're tuning in or you're right here before me, I say welcome, welcome, welcome. The times that we are going through right now are times of reflection and our time to stay focused on the King. And so as you view this service and once the service is over, think about your quarantine with the King. It's our time to know that Jesus is our Lord and Savior. And if there is anything or anyone who can get us through this time, it's our King. You are welcome. Welcome, welcome. And now let us move forward in service. Amen. Amen. Amen.
child growing up in church, there was a lady in the gospel chorus whose name was Dale Davis. And she had a baritone voice. All right. It was full. And, and, and even though I wasn't so much into church as as a child, I went because that was where my parents said we would be. Amen. Uh, I got great joy, even as a youngster, listening to Dale Davis sing. And one song in particular, because she sang it in such a way that you just had to believe that she was she really meant what she said. She would say. Well, it's another day's journey, and I'm glad, I'm glad. chapter of the Gospel of St. John. Uh, there are 31 verses, and I am going to read the 31st verse, but these things are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life through his name. For a few moments this morning, I want to talk about overcoming the barriers to faith. Overcoming the barriers to faith. <clears throat> Last Sunday, we celebrated the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ. We celebrated his resurrection from, from the tomb. And, and if that had been a normal resurrection Sunday and uh, a world not tainted by the coronavirus, we would have dressed in our best clothes and uh, we, would, we would have celebrated uh, with, with gifts and toys and uh, we would have dyed eggs. I, I laughed the other day. I have, a, I have a package of paws in the drawer next to my uh, refrigerator for, for dyed eggs that uh, I never got around to this 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 year. I, I'll admit that I, I am a child at heart, and there have been, after my children were grown, there have been some some resurrection weekends while where I imported some children. 
<laughs> so I had an excuse to die eggs with, with them. We, we would have done uh, all of, of those things. Every year we, we do those things. We celebrate every year. And every year we leave the celebration with many having yet unchanged lives, hopeless hearts, and fearful futures. We, we, we celebrate and then we leave doubtful about our direction. And, and I would say that, that, that these are, are odd responses about the good news of the resurrected Lord. However, Scripture recorded in the Gospel of John reveals that the first ones to get the news reacted in much the same way. The, the Gospels are stereographic in nature. They, they come from different points of view. Each one, though in harmony with another Gospel, echoes out a different tone and a different uh, uh, point of view. And so it is with the Gospel of John. John, John's gospel is a human gospel, and, and, and when he deals with the resurrection of Christ, he, he doesn't do it from the perspective of, of great glory and great celebration. He does it from the human perspective of doubt, fear, and grief. And so I thought this morning I would, I would deal with it from John's point of view in, in the 20th chapter of, of the gospel that bears his name. In his resurrection appearances, Jesus continues to reveal the glory of God by manifesting the grace and love that characterized God. The 20th chapter of John contains a series of encounters with the resurrected Christ that show him overcoming a variety of barriers to faith, including ignorance, grief, fear, and doubt. Verses 1 through 10 of the 20th chapter of the Gospel of John tells us that Mary Magdalene came to the sepulcher while it was yet dark. This darkness may well be symbolic of both Mary and the disciples' condition on that morning. According to John, the tomb was standing open when she arrived, and assuming that Jesus' body had been stolen, she ran off to tell Peter and John. Peter and John run to the tomb in a headlong spread. They arrive and enter an empty tomb. John's gospel says nothing about angels or an announcement but he does say that Peter observed that the grave clothes, the shroud in which Jesus had been wrapped, and the napkin that had been wrapped around his head lay neatly folded on the stone. Jesus was not there, but this was no grave robbery. When John enters the tomb, Scripture says that he saw and he believed. But verse 9 says, they still did not understand that Jesus had risen from the dead. John sees that something strange has happened. He has the faith to recognize the fingerprint of God, but he does not understand what he sees. And because they don't understand, they don't tell anybody that the tomb is empty mm -hmm. and that the grave clothes have been left behind. All right. Many of us are unable to embrace the resurrection of Christ and all that it means for us because we lack the understanding of all of its consequences. We have not grasped that in the sacrificial death of Jesus, our sins were washed away and our souls were set free. In the resurrection of Christ, it is the antidote for the sting of death and power from on high. Romans chapter six, verses three through five, put it this way. Know ye not that so many of you 
or so many of us as were baptized in Jesus Christ were baptized unto his death. Therefore, we are buried with him into death. That like as Christ was raised from the dead, we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Verses 11 through 18 of the 20th chapter of the Gospel of John deal with Mary's grief. John does not tell us when Mary returned to the tomb. He simply continues the story with her crying there. Her great love is poured out in grief. She thinks she's alone. She looks into the tomb and there are two angels sitting on at the head and the foot of the stone. But through her tears, she does not recognize their angelic aura. They address her with compassion. Woman, why are you crying? She answers that her Lord has been taken away and she can't find him. And even before they can announce the good news, there is suddenly someone standing behind Mary. Right. She sees him, but again, the depth of her grief does not recognize that the Lord, that it is the Lord she is looking for, standing behind her. Jesus asked the question, woman, why are you crying? And who are you looking for? Grief can be a significant barrier to faith. Yeah. I've known people who have never been able to establish a faith relationship with God because they could, could not see past their grief. In anger, they have held God responsible for their loss, unable to see through their tears that he is the God of restoration. Yeah. Mary's life had stopped at the cemetery. Mm -hmm. Listen to her words. Tell me where you took him, and I will go and get him and take him away myself. All Mary could see was her grief, and, and her grief pre prevented her from even recognizing when the resurrected Christ was in her midst. All right. You see, God is not the cause of death. Sin is. Yeah, yeah. The wages of sin is death, and the soul that sinneth shall surely die. God is not the cause of death, sin is. And Jesus is not the cause of death, he is the answer to it. For it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, then in verse 57, the sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law, but thanks be unto God who gives us the victory through our Lord, Jesus Christ. Yes, yes. Jesus called Mary's name and restored her to joy. Jesus is also calling your name because he wants to bind up your broken heart. Mm -hmm. Jesus is calling your name because he wants to dry your tear-stained eyes. Jesus is calling your name because he's God's answer to death and he wants to share life with you. Jesus called Mary by her name and restored her joy. In verses 19 through 23 of the 20th chapter of the Gospel of John, Jesus addresses that barrier to faith known as fear. In the evening of the resurrection, the disciples were gathered together. They had heard the witness of Mary, and perhaps 
that of Peter and John. You would think that such good news would have given them hope, but the only reaction recorded or mentioned by John is fear. We find the disciples isolated and held up. We find the disciples isolated and held up. We find the disciples isolated and held up in hiding. Locked behind closed doors. On Easter Sunday, churches are usually filled with people who have heard about the resurrection of Christ. Mm -hmm. However, what was heard has not been has not made them witnesses. Many of us still remain afraid. Afraid of what other people may say or think. Afraid of what they think they have to give up. It, it has been conjectured that Jesus had to show up in the midst of them in the room because they were so afraid that if he had not, he, they may not have opened the door. Fear. Fear is a kind of torture. It keeps one upset and ill at ease. Jesus appears in their midst with a word of comfort. The first words to his disciples was peace. I, I know you're frightened. I know you're disturbed. I, I, I know you're confused. I, I, I know you've been comfortless, but let me speak a word of peace in your life. I will challenge you that there are some people listening to this message this morning and, and what you need right now is the peace of God. Mm -hmm. You are afraid, you are worried, you don't know what tomorrow holds, you may have, you may have wound up out of work, uh, you may have developed a cough and you're not sure what it's related to. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, and you need a word of peace. I, I stopped to tell you this morning that Jesus speaks the word of peace. Yes. And, and, and if you would hear, if you would listen, if you would take it in, you'll find there's a peace in God that can sustain you when the world is turning. Jesus says, you don't have to be afraid to own me. I've come to bring you power from on high. Now, the opposite of fear is courage. And courage is defined as the power to act in spite of the circumstances. Jesus gives them a mission and a charge to literally come out of hiding. He says to them, you don't have to stay here. Come on out of, of hiding. And I would conjecture today that some under the sound of my voice are also being called to come out of hiding. To come out of hiding. You don't have to be afraid. God is a very present help in time of trouble. Yes. Your faith can overcome your fear. Look to God, lean on God, rest in God, and your faith will overcome your fear. There's one other barrier to faith. Ignorance, grief, hmm. fear, but there's one other. And it is doubt. And in verses 24 through 29 of the 20th chapter of the Gospel of John, Jesus addresses doubt. John tells us that Jesus had visited the disciples a week earlier and that Thomas was not there. On the first day of the resurrection, verse 24, the disciples tell Thomas that they have seen the Lord, but he doesn't believe them. 
In verse 25, Thomas declares that unless I touch the nail prints in his hand, uh, unless I see them for myself, unless I, I can stick my hand in the wound in his side, I will not believe. But Thomas says, I, I, was, I, I saw it. I, I saw them crucify him. I saw them put crowns of thorns on his head. I, I saw them nail him to the cross. I saw them take him down and bury him in that bottle tomb. And I'm not buying on your word that after what I've seen, he could be alive. But one week later, the disciples are together again in that locked room. And this time, Thomas is with them when Jesus appears. Faith throughout the gospel narrative and in life in general is progressive. It is both renewed and enhanced with every unfolding revelation. I, I grew up on Bible stories. My dad was a deacon in the church when I was born. I, I grew up on Sunday school and BTU and the stories of David and, and, and Goliath. I, 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 I knew a lot. But it didn't become relevant to me until I called on the Lord and I got an answer. All right. Mm -hmm. Faith throughout the gospel narrative and in life in general is progressive. You start out maybe just believing in what you read or, or what you heard. Or, or, or you came to kind of believe it because grandma said it. Or, or, or mama said it. Or you, you decided that you would pray because one day you heard daddy pray. It, it, but, 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 but it grows. It is progressive hopefully to the point that you get to call on him for yourself. The disciples' encounter with the resurrected Lord when Thomas was not there put their growing faith ahead of that of Thomas. When people show that they don't have faith or they don't have the faith you have, or are burdened with doubts while you become sure, don't be angry with them. It just means they don't know him like you know him. Yeah, 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 yeah. They haven't been with him like you've been with him. Thomas had not been, Thomas had not been able to move forward because he had not believe the revelation of the other disciples. But doubt is a dangerous place yes, yes. to not move on when Jesus' cause is literally to move in reverse or even to back away. Right. Both believing and unbelieving are dynamic forces because we are either growing in one direction or in the other. When Jesus appears in the midst of the disciples and Thomas is there, he challenges Thomas to move ahead in faith, to stop doubting and believe. You see, faith is always either progressing or diminishing. And Jesus stop becoming Jesus says to Thomas stop becoming an unbeliever and get on with becoming a believer. Mm -hmm. And that's my message this morning. You've heard the news. You may have even spread it through an Easter speech years ago. Uh -huh. You've run across people who believe and you live in fear. You've run across people who believe and you're still living in grief. You, you've run across people who believe and you're still living in, in doubt. But I challenge you this morning that, that you need to come a little closer. That 
You, you need to stop becoming an unbeliever and get on with becoming a believer. Perhaps you're hearing me and, and you say, Reverend, that sounds good, but how, how do I get on with becoming a believer? How does one become a believer? How, how can I advance my faith? I'm glad you asked. How does one become a believer? Well, let me tell you what he told Thomas concerning his doubt. He said, Thomas, I'm here. Here I am, Thomas. You say you won't believe until you can touch the wounds in my hand. You say you won't believe until you can put your hand in the spear wound in my side. Jesus says to Thomas, come over here, boy, and, and, and touch me for yourself. Yeah. And that's really how you become a believer. You heard what other folks said. You read what other people have said. You listened to gospel music. You had an Easter speech a long time ago. But I am challenging you this morning to touch God for yourself. If you will reach out, if you will reach forward, if you will come through and touch Jesus for
There are, we pray for the Middlebrooks family. Yes, yes. Their family patriarch is laid to rest on Friday of this week. There are, there are several members of our congregation who are in health services. They are on the front line of fighting this battle. And, and along with all the healthcare workers, we want to lift them up before the Lord this morning. I, I read about a healthcare worker who was retired. But, but the call went out. We don't, we, we don't have a spot on the payroll for you, but we need your help. And, and they, they, they left home and, and, and went back to doing what they had retired from. Because they were needed. And we need to remember them. We need to remember our sins. Some of them are unable to get out. We need to pray for them, but we also need to stay in contact with them, knowing that we can be their arms and their legs. We can speak words of encouragement in their ears. And then there are some caregivers who have put their own lives on hold for their mother or their sister or their father or son. And then, man, the whole world needs to pray. A father who art in heaven. The sun is shining and the, the rays of the sun are warm but the streets are empty. Same time like this before. Our friends and loved ones are no longer able to work. Some of them are now trying to figure out how to feed their families.